For six years, Johanna Plesner was an elected member of the Knesset or Parliament in Israel. He is now the president of the Israel Democracy Institute. He is with us from Had Hasharon in central Israel. Uh, Johanna, thank you very much for taking the time. Hamas officials Thanks. have. Uh, Thanks, Good morning from Israel. Good to see you. Now, the uh, Hamas officials have declared uh, victory over the IDF, as they often do. Uh, but given the number of dead Palestinians, it's around 230. The extent of the destruction in Gaza, it's 300 million or so or more. If this is victory, then what does losing look like? Uh, well, this is not a competition for uh, who uh, killed as many people as possible. Hamas initiated uh, uh, this round of violence by shooting uh, rockets and missiles at Israeli targets, is Israel's capital, Israel's uh, metropolitan center, Tel Aviv, and Israel had to respond, and it responded in order to reduce Hamas's motivation and Hamas's ca capacity uh, to initiate such uh, attacks. And, uh, and uh, we did so, again, by uh, undermining their uh, capacity, the stockpiles of weapons, uh, the R&D facilities, uh, uh, the metro, the system of tunnels uh, that was designed to uh, 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 enable Hamas to attack Israel and to infiltrate into Israel uh, proper and, and kill Israeli uh, uh, civilians. Uh, so this capacity uh, was uh, reduced, and, and this was the main uh, goal of the operation. I wouldn't count on uh, uh, a sort of a European-type peace now between uh, Israel and Gaza. Let's remember, Hamas has a charter and an ideology to turn the region into a medieval area run by clerics uh, supported by uh, uh, Iran, uh, where there's no room, no, not for a Jewish state that needs to be annihilated in their view, not for uh, uh, women with free rights, not for minorities. So we're dealing with a very, very extreme ideology uh, that is trying also to implement it by using force and, and first and foremost by uh, uh, torturing its own citizens all the civilians that, uh, that uh, pay the price in this uh, conflict on the Gaza side are the making of the Hamas leadership uh, that cynically and consciously uh, placed its stockpiles of weapons and capabilities within the civilian population. So it's very well, on unfortunate. That note, just, just on the civilian casualty toll, we're looking at 230-something Palestinians who were killed in Gaza. Last time around, it was closer to 2,300, 10 times that number. Admittedly, it lasted a lot longer. but. Uh, obviously, 230 dead people is too many, but clearly, is Israel getting better at targeting uh, the Hamas infrastructure, avoiding these civilian areas? Well, uh, uh, first of all, we have to break down those 230. I, uh, John, I don't want to be inaccurate, so let's assume about half, or at least half of sure. them, are Hamas operatives, terrorists who were uh, uh, trained in order to kill uh, Israeli citizens, not Israeli soldiers, by the way. The entire capacity of Hamas, uh, instead of building, uh, creating Hong Kong or Singapore of the Middle East, uh, all the available resources were uh, put in place in order to build capacity uh, to kill Israeli citizens. So about half of those casualties are people who had to die in order uh, because uh, they were planning to kill citizens. The other are uh, what's called, and in, in it's a problematic word, are collateral damage. Now, Israel, I, I, I can't see any other military, not the Americans in Afghanistan or Iraq or the Brits in, uh, uh, in Iraq or any other uh, a conflict uh, where there was such care and professionalism put in place in order to target uh, uh, the terrorists and to save and spare as many uh, civilian lives. And this ratio of about 50 percent, you won't find it anywhere else. And Hamas is cynically making it uh, uh, very difficult. They're not placing their uh, weapons in, uh, in military bases, but rather in apartment buildings, in mosques, in uh, uh, hospitals, in schools, and so on. So it made it uh, difficult for the IDF. And many times the IDF uh, gave up on clear uh, Hamas targets just in order not to uh, uh, exact the civilian uh, casualties. So this explains how IDF is extremely cautious right. uh, uh, not to affect civilians. And this explains this uh, outcome that, as you mentioned, is is uh, is uh, I mean it's it's every civilian casualty is tragic but it's still a, a lot better than the 2014 yeah. situation and and there is a ceasefire which is in place right now but we heard from both the Palestinian and the Israeli UN representatives making it clear that a ceasefire is not a solution listen to this 
Israel, with its state-of-the-art arms, is targeting families as they sleep to sow the seeds of terror. The occupation targets our people generation after generation. This criminal Israeli occupation has caused so much pain which cannot be solved by a truce and a ceasefire. You cannot fire at our capital and then pretend you want a ceasefire. Israel wants a ceasefire, but only after significantly degrading Hamas's terror machine. We are looking for a cure and not a band-aid. So even if both sides observe the ceasefire, it still does nothing to address the reasons for you know, the, the overall conflict, the bigger picture here. So what is the bare minimum that must be done by Israel and by the Palestinians to get out of this cycle of major conflict every few years? Well, and, and create a distinction between uh, uh, the immediate term of you know, g uh, restoring a, a calm and what's required for that is simply for Hamas not to continue shooting. Israel, once it acknowledged that it uh, accepts uh, uh, the ceasefire, uh, Israel will not shoot any more uh, rockets and has no intention of doing so. So it solely depends on one uh, parameter, whether Hamas will continue to shoot or not. On the longer term, it's, uh, John, it's a lot more uh, complicated because, uh, as I mentioned, Hamas's raison d'etre, if you will, the entire logic of its existence is to annihilate the state of Israel. And it's not something that we can ignore. There's no issue of occupation because Israel uh, pulled out of the Gaza Strip to the last centimeter. So Israel does not control Gaza. It does uh, affect uh, its uh, ports of uh, entry because we know that Hamas, uh, rather than building, again, the Singapore of the Middle East, is trying to uh, 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 build a terror state uh, that uh, will have capacity and an, and a, and an ability uh, uh, to kill as many Israeli citizens. So if Hamas decides that they want to focus on rebuilding uh, uh, their own region, uh, economic opportunity, uh, health institutions. Uh, Israel will be there th and, and help them uh, uh, to do so. But I'm uh, quite skeptical that this will be the outcome. So a more uh, uh, courageous and difficult strategic path would be to reinstate or re-help uh, the Palestinian Authority, much like President Bi Biden is try insinuating that he wants to do, helping the Palestinian, strengthening the Palestinian Authority, helping them uh, build capacity in Gaza, and then hopefully moving forward with the Palestinian Authority uh, to a negotiated uh, settlement. This should, this should be the strategic uh, uh, way forward, but uh, uh, given the situation right now, I'm quite skeptical that we're going there. Well, we can only hope. Uh, Johanna and Plessner there, thank you for being with us. We appreciate it.